additive manufacturing, well, it's evolving rapidly. And today, the reputation of 3D printing as a maker-dominated space full of hobbyists and amateurs, well, that's given way to industrial additive. That's a new generation of hardware and software designed to deliver production parts and truly representative prototypes at competitive cost. How competitive? Metal 3D printing is now beginning to challenge both centuries-old fabrication methods such as casting and forging, but also modern processes such as five-axis machining and metal injection molding. Of course, there are drawbacks to metal additive manufacturing at its current state of development, but the advantages to be had by designing parts with the process in mind can tilt the decision toward this new technology. And as designers come to rely on elements and features that just can't be made any other way, I expect that metal additive manufacturing will break out this year as a truly production technology. Now that sentiment was visible everywhere at the recent Rapid 2019 show in Detroit. Take a look. Every time I come to the show, I hear about a new alloy that's being developed for a new machine. It's the first time the 3D printed part was a lower cost solution than the traditionally made cast part. I don't think there would be any startup right now doing liquid propulsion um, uh, if 3D printing wasn't around. Of course, the low-hanging fruit for metal additive is aerospace, where lightweight and high strength go hand in hand. Now, GE has led the way in mass production of engine parts with this technology, and several rocket engine manufacturers will there in play, too. Max Houghton and his company, Launcher, represent a perfect example of how metal 3D printing can win in aerospace. You're looking at the largest 3D printed rocket engine nozzle printed in a single piece. Now, this represents some of the key strengths of metal additive manufacturing. Part consolidation, light weighting, and unique design features like the conformal cooling channels running through this nozzle. Our focus is highest performance so that we have the highest margin and the most payload for a given vehicle size and vehicle cost. Another advantage of additive manufacturing, including metal additive, is the capability to quickly and cost-effectively reproduce out-of-production parts for repairs and maintenance. Greg Mark of Mark Forged showed us a replacement part for an industrial hydraulic tool, and we've previously reported on manifolds printed by Concept Laser for the restoration of a vintage P-51 airplane. Here's the original component that's, uh, that's on the top. This is designed to last for years and years of industrial use. This original component was made out of four pieces that was cast, machined, screwed together, etc. The 3D printed component, it's one piece. The magic here is it's the first time the 3D printed part was a lower cost solution than the traditionally made cast part. We had our grand opening at our new 55,000 square foot facility where we will be focusing on production. So we saw the need and we are creating the space for that need. We believe, as you mentioned, that it's the largest single part 3D printed combustion chamber in the world. Right now it's a first prototype, we've already printed three prototypes in um, aluminium alloy and then it will be printed in highest performance copper alloy to allow the, the best performance cooling. Let's be clear, additive manufacturing has many advantages but the technology has weaknesses too. The process may never be able to compete with the speed and efficiency of high volume stamping for example. Materials are also a sticking point. Subtractive processes can work with nearly any alloy on the planet, but the roster of metals available in the specialized powders that most metal additive processes require, well, that's limited. Now, handling that powder before and after printing also represents a challenge, even a hazard in some cases. We're expanding our lab, and we are making alloy development the preference for that facility. So what we'll be doing is getting that efficient feedback from the lab and parameter setting from our printers. So the chemistry of the powder, how the powder actually produced, size distribution, and also the morphology and shape of the powder. But that powder and that material is really interacting with the beam source. The whole interaction of the powder and a beam source in a machine is basically a material science. It's all about solidification, you know, melting solidification and repeated thermal cycles. And after that, you have post-processing. It's all about material performance, property. Ironically, although metal additive has found niche applicability in aerospace and the medical device industries, these are also subject to the most intense regulations. Outside of prototypes, the processes, materials, and finished parts must pass through a lot of red tape before production can proceed. Now, several companies, including GE Additive, are focused on expanding metal powder material offerings and studying how these materials perform. This whole ecosystem provides a certifiable uh, material, and, and that is a challenge. This is, this is really a barrier. If you know, you know what is your incoming material, you have a right control on your powder, on your process, your post-processing, you will have a material that performs exactly what you want and what it is important for your application and different businesses, including aviation, medical, and other industry. Now, printed parts typically, well, they have a rough surface finish, somewhat comparable to cast parts. For precision applications, such as mating surfaces or threads, printed parts may require complex and labor-intensive post-processing, such as grinding or machining. Companies such as Desktop Metal, Mark Forge, 
HP and Ascentium employ processes which produce a green part which must be censored in an oven, very much like a powder metallurgy part. And like any powder metallurgy part, they may shrink anisotropically. Metal parts produced by nearly any additive process have occasionally been known to warp or bend as internal stresses are relieved during machining or heat treatment, a cost and time factor for anyone trying to produce accurate, precise parts. One exciting opportunity afforded by metal additive manufacturing is that it's giving small companies like Launcher access to industries that were once completely closed off due to the high cost of R&D and manufacturing in markets such as rocket engines. 20 years ago, it would have been unheard of for a startup to contribute to any rocket engine project in a meaningful way, let alone launch payloads into orbit. I don't think there would be any startup right now doing liquid propulsion um, uh, if 3D printing wasn't around, and certainly we wouldn't be around. Aerospace, of course, will likely remain the leader in the use of metal additive, but as costs decrease, I expect this technology to move into commodity markets rapidly. The, the likelihood is that, you know, three people will share one printer, right? There'll be a ratio of printers to people, where, you know, and what we see is now that uh, because each part off the 3D printer is so much lower cost than getting it made out of house, companies will buy a printer, start using it, it'll get to like 60% capacity, and they'll, they'll finance the next printer off the savings from the first printer. You will take existing designs, legacy designs, and you'll do direct replacement. And you can do direct replacement with one or two or three percent of the capacity of the volume until you gain confidence in the manufacturing capability. HP has astutely identified that the vast majority of metal parts manufactured across industry, across the globe in fact, are made of steel. So that company has decided to pursue steel as a primary focus in its metal additive manufacturing business. Now it's inevitable that increased competition from the metal 3D printers of the world will increase pressure on traditional processes, such as CNC machining, die casting, and metal injection molding, you know, to drive innovation and improvements to those processes. You now this will have a positive effect on production costs no matter how you make your parts. Metal additive is evolving rapidly with big corporations and big bucks behind it, but a few things still need to fall into place. Companies are working on ways to improve in-process monitoring to ensure the finished part will have the desired physical and metallurgical properties. For example, Siaki has developed a closed-loop system which uses a vision system to watch continuously measure the melt pool. Syntavia and several other companies have built extensive lab testing facilities. Having our mechanical testing, tensile testing, fatigue testing in-house, having our lab in-house, the hockey pucks, we can analyze the powder before and after, we can analyze the, the product before and after, and just make sure that we're on track. The good news is, the other side of the technology, like using machine learning, AI, uh, big databases, you know, faster way of doing testing, these are all helping us to do faster. And we have shown how we can uh, accelerate the base of development of new materials for this technology. And that would be the future, you know, and you can basically advance the capability of, of the materials. Now these strategies may help to reduce potential defects such as pinholes, porosity, microcracks, and segregation. Manufacturers also want post-processing and powder handling to be safe, inexpensive, and fast. But for many options on the market, this hasn't yet been fully realized. Today, there isn't a well-established set of best practices and design guidelines for metal 3D printed parts. This means that there's a lot of duplication of effort across industry as engineers try to develop designs that work. Additive manufacturing is a digital process. It all starts with a CAD file, and ideally anyone can push a button and start producing that part. Now this raises significant questions about intellectual property and data security concerns, especially given the popularity of 3D printing service bureaus for which customers actually send their files over the internet to be manufactured. Lastly, expanding the selection of available materials for metal additive manufacturing, including specialized aerospace alloys all the way up to commodity steels, well that will also go a long way toward making metal additive manufacturing viable in a wide range of industries and applications. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the links below for more information on metal additive manufacturing from engineering.com.